Hey guys, MovieFan here to do our final chapter in our Megazord project, and that would be the Mastodon Shield. Now I'll be honest with everyone, I had to do this twice because the first time I made it too big. I figured because of my height and all that I would need it to be bigger, but it proved to be way too big and unwieldy to take to the Comic Con. So I started anew using the original as a template. Now the first thing I did was grab my Megazord hand. I placed it on a piece of cardboard because obviously I wanted to be able to get my hand on there. I placed it on this cardboard right here, and I marked exactly where the peg was going to go for my hand. Now, I had this piece extra long so I could fold it. So I grabbed my carpenter's square, and I bent it right where I wanted. The part that I bent down is going to be the forehead to the mastodon. Next, cut two more pieces to fit to the sides of the head. Be sure that they're exactly the same length as the top of the head itself. After that, duct tape them into place. They should look something like this when you're done. But of course we need the forehead to slope, so we need to cut two triangular pieces that will fit on the temples. Once you got them cut to the right shape, duct tape them into place. Now we're going to make the sides and the bottom of the head. This one proved to be a little tricky. What I did was I cut two long pieces to this exact shape, and I bent them in these places. I fit both pieces around the head like this, and I realized I had to cut one of them short. So I cut it down to about roughly that size, and I duct taped them together. And this is what I got. Next, we're going to close the face in. For that, we need to cut two strips of cardboard to this exact shape, and one strip of cardboard to this triangle shape. You'll need the two square pieces to be roughly the same size as the triangle shape. First, duct tape the triangle shape to the center of the forehead, and then duct tape the two side pieces right there. After that, cut two more triangular pieces and put them between the big triangle and the two side pieces on the face. If you got any gaps showing like this, just cover it with duct tape. It'll be fine. But don't cover the big gap that we left at the bottom, because we're going to need that later. After that, the front should look something like this and the side will look like this. Next, we're gonna fill in that gap. To do that, cut a piece of cardboard to this exact shape and duct tape it into place. This will cover the underneath part. And then cut a piece of cardboard to this shape. That'll cover the front right below it. Now, it's gonna look funny this way, but there is a purpose to it, which we will get to later. Next, cut four square pieces and duct tape them to the bottom of the head. This is gonna be the starting point for the trunk. I suggest you label them so you don't confuse them. Once you got them duct taped to the base of the bottom of the head, duct tape them all together. When you're done, it should look like this. Next, grab some cereal boxes. Cut two of them into the exact same widths of the front and the back of the trunk. And with two more cereal boxes, draw a shape similar to this. Check it to make sure that's the way you want it, and cut them into shape. After that, duct tape all four sides into place and then duct tape it all together. Then, of course, you'll want to top it off with a big square piece of cardboard. Next, we're going to work on making the ears. First, we need to make the back part. Now, how we do this is we get two big pieces of cardboard, set the head right on it, and trace out this shape and cut it. Be sure to do the same for the other side. Next, cut both pieces into this exact shape. After a final check to make sure that's the way you want it, duct tape them into place. Next, we're going to take this time to figure out where the tusks need to go. You'll need the cardboard tubes of paper towels to do this. First, grab two of the cardboard tubes and cut them diagonally. This is important because when we put these together eventually, it's going to look like a tusk going up. Grab the two tubes that you cut and place it on the side of the head like this. Once you're satisfied with how you want it to sit, mark the side of the head for future reference. And now, we're going to finish the ears. Now, we need a gap for the tusks as well as a stopping point for the bottom of the ears. So draw a line going this direction, then cut out two of these exact pieces right here, and duct tape them right on the line on either ear. Next, cut two small triangle-shaped pieces like this. This is going to be the top part of either ear. Be sure to label them, because we're going to make a few more triangles and such, so this way you won't get confused. Next, cut two more triangle shapes. After that, cut out two large square shapes and two large triangle shapes. Again, label them so you don't get confused. Once you do a final check to see if they'll fit, place them down like so, and tape them into place. Do the same for the other side. If this is going too fast for you, go with the big triangle first at the bottom, then the square piece, then your second triangle, and finish off with your first triangle. When you tape them to the side of the head, you want to give it a sloping effect. That way it'll look like, well, like a shield. Then cover the head with duct tape, both front and back. Be sure to stop right at the top of the trunk right here. 
Once you're done with the head, cover the trunk with gray duct tape. Next, cut two long pieces of black duct tape and place them at the end of the trunk right here. Next, cut yourself a long rectangular piece and two triangles. I believe these are what they call right triangles. Now this piece is going to go right here, so it's important that you get it just right. Cut them to shape and test them to make sure they fit right. Once you're sure they fit right, tape them together and then duct tape it into place. And now we're going to build the tusks. Now we need to figure out how long we want the tusk to extend before we curl it up some more. So grab another paper towel tube and stick it right in the first tusk piece we made and set the whole thing next to the head like this. Once you're satisfied where you want it to be, draw a diagonal line and cut it. After you cut it, grab the short piece that you cut off and stick it right into the first tusk piece. Grab another cardboard tube and do the same exact thing to measure how you want it to go. The only difference is this one's going to be a longer piece. But just like before, stick it into the shorter piece, adjust the angle, and when you're satisfied, make a diagonal mark on it and cut it off. After that, grab the smaller piece, stick it into the end, and there you have your tusk. Repeat this whole process one more time and you got two tusks. Once you're satisfied with how they look, grab your black marker and mark the base of each piece. That way you can fit it right where it needs to go. Then grab some Gorilla Glue and put it right where it's going to connect. Connect them and leave them alone overnight. That way the glue will stay firm. After that whole day has passed, cover the whole thing with silver duct tape. There will probably be a gap at the end, so just grab yourself a piece of cardboard and make this little shape right here. Then duct tape it into place. Now before we put the tusks in, we're going to do a little cosmetic work right on the face. Cut a long piece of yellow duct tape and place it on a piece of plastic. Once you got it there, cut it right down the middle. Then take both pieces and place them here and here. You'll probably have a little extra coming over the side, but that's okay. We'll just cut that off and fill in the gap right here. And now we're going to put the tusks on. Grab a tusk and place it on the side of the head. Be sure to check the angle to make sure that's the way you want it. Duct tape the base right here. Be sure to use a lot of black duct tape when you're doing this. You also want to grab some more silver duct tape and tape it right here. Be sure that it goes all the way on to the side of the head. Once you got it into place, grab some black duct tape and cover over that silver duct tape on the side of the head. Repeat the whole process one more time. Next, grab some red duct tape and cut yourself a small square and place it right in the center of the head. And using the same process that we did before, making the long pieces of yellow duct tape on the center of the head, cut some thin ribbons of yellow duct tape for the ears. For this, you'll have to look at your Megazord toy as well as some stills from the TV series to determine exactly how you want them to look. When you got them cut the way you want, place them on the ears like so. Be sure to do the same for the other ear. After that, grab some red duct tape and cut six thin ribbons and place them on the ears like so. Next, cut two long pieces of white duct tape. Cut the width down to exactly one inch in diameter and then place them on the head like so. After that, cut a small piece of green duct tape and cut it to the shape of a letter M and place it right between the lines. Next, we're going to make a little peg that'll slip right into your Megazord hand. Fortunately for me, I was able to find a small piece of wood that actually fit right into the hole of the Megazord hand. So I grabbed it, cut it, then I glued it right where that hole mark where my fist was and duct taped it into place. Do not skip out on the duct tape when you do this. And now for the final touch, we're going to make the eyes. What you do is cut two more pieces of white duct tape, mark, and cut out this exact shape. Be sure to have them marked and cut in opposite directions like you see here. After you do that, peel them off and put them right where they're supposed to go. And there you have your Mastodon shield. And that, my friends, is our final episode to our Megazord project. I hope you had a lot of fun watching these videos because I had a lot of fun making them, especially making all the props to the Megazord costume itself. And I'll tell you this, when I decided to do this, I wanted to go all in because, you know, I've seen many people talk about how to make the power sword, and I've seen some great cosplay costumes on the Megazord itself, but I've never seen one person try to make the Mastodon shield, or even hint at it. So. I wanted to be the first. And I would say the results came out a lot better than I had hoped. It's light, it's mobile, it's easy to use. So to all you Power Rangers fans out there, I hope you give these projects a try. And if you ever try the Mastodon Shield, 
let me know how it came out. This is Movie Fan, signing off.